yeah hello and welcome back and let us continue with our lesson over here and today we are going to cover the ssl and the tsl certificate pinning inside our flutter application and we are covering this on the section 4 which is building a secure application and uh, let's get started with it so i have one diagram over here and uh, let me minimize this one so uh, when you are having a, a connection to a server or let's say our mobile application is connecting to the our api and by default it should have a connection from the client to the server directly but let's say if somebody try to impersonate like i i am the server over here and you should connect to me so our application will be connecting to that particular uh, man in the middle person and he will be trying to like doing all of those connections for us so we will be connecting to him he will be sending that uh, request back to the server server will send back the request to him and he will again forward that to this particular user over here so this is the mitm attack that uh, we uh, basically see it's not always there but it is possible to happen so if this kind of uh, things happen over here we will be having the all of our connection going through this person sitting on the middle and he will be able to accept and decrypt all of our connection detail maybe you are sending some secure information and all of those stuff are already compromised over here so prevent this kind of attack we will be using uh, ssl pinning which is a, to have a secure server or secure connection between the client and the server so let's say you have a app and you pin one certificate over here and when we send a request to the server and let's say uh, hello server this is my tsl ssl version and all of those information to back to the server and the server will be sending like hello client and uh, this is my certificate this is my public key and all of those information will be sent back to the client and the client once we have this app has this pin certificate we will verify that certificate once the service sends back us this uh, certificate and his public key we will try to verify with our pin certificate over here and once that is verified we will say that oh okay this is a secure connection and we will establish a connection but if that doesn't verify or if the pin certificate doesn't match with the server certificate then we'll say that the connection which failed so this is the simple uh, way of uh, diagram that i hope you will understand how the things in the uh, SSL pinning works over here and uh, the, the downside of this one is that your certificate that you pin over here should be always valid if let's say your, your certif server certificate is renewed but the, the certificate that you pinned over here um, is not, not, not renewed right so it, which means that you, you, you revoke the certificate from the server and install a new one but you didn't update that certificate inside your application that will always drop the connection which will have a connection fail. so make sure when ever you revoke or install a new certificate on the server you also need to update the certificate that you have pinned inside your application so let us get started with it and i will be um, going back to my let's open the vs code and uh, what we will be doing is uh, in the previous lecture we have already set up all of our requirement like the ENVs and all of those stuff let us open uh, this ENV over here so what I will do is I'll just remove this certificate from here currently so uh, I will let me show you everything from the ground saying let me delete all of those okay so we don't have anything so what will this will create one variable over here uh, which will be certificate let's call it as a certificate over here and we need to pass in the value over here to get that value what we will do is let's go back to our uh, let me open up the browser over here and i'll be using this uh zero ssl and you may use any other certificate provider here i'm getting a free certificate for the 90 days for my uh, domain over here i have this particular domain and i get a free certificate from here so what i will do is once you have the certificate you may be using any other certificate provider it doesn't matter what you have to do is you have just have to download that particular certificate just download the certificate and uh, once you have downloaded that certificate let us try to 
open that certificate okay so here is my certificate and uh, you will see that I have a private key certificate authority bundle and the certificate so these are the things that you will be basically uploading to your server if you are using the cPanel and other stuff uh, there is an option to upload all of those right but what we need is we need this certificate or this .crt file over here this is the one that we are going to pin inside our application so what we will do is we will open this one uh, let's open with uh, other application and I'll search with the text editor so not the text so it should be text and uh, let's try to open with the text uh, edit so once I open it uh, I will get this particular uh, begin certificate and the end certificate so which means this is the file that uh, is what I need it for here so once you open that certificate make sure you have this particular beginning and the end so we need to copy this from here and uh, since we cannot paste a multi line inside our .env file so if I go to my uh, application over here here I cannot paste it in the multiple line over here so uh, what I need to do is I need to have it in single line so what I need to do is in order to create a single variable over here what I'll go is I'll go back over here and go to the base 64 and in the base 64 what I will do is I'll just paste that over here uh, we need to encode it okay so don't decode it we need to encode it in the encoding what we'll do is we'll just encode that one and uh, if you are not sure about the base 64 you you can go to the base 64 encode.org make sure you go to this website and then, then uh, either you can just uh, encode it yourself right so the, we also have an option to encode directly from the the terminal but i'm going to show you from here so uh, i have already encoded this one so i'll just copy this one from here and what i will do is i'll just go back to my application and i'll just paste it over here so now we have it in the base 64 format of our certificate in the single line and i'll just copy this one and i will be just pasting out this in the other from here so let us have for you uh, on the actual app you may have a different certificate for your different flavor or your different environment so currently we have a uh, four environment which is of uh, uh, development uh, qa and uat and the production so all of those you may have a different certificate different server so you may have to set over here and this certificate you can give uh, any name it doesn't need to be a certificate but for me i'm just keeping as as a certificate over here so once we have set up all of this over here which means now we have this certificate already put in over here next next thing is that we need to go to our let's go back to our core and we have a remote and we have a network service here we have our do do which is the http client that we are using for our connection so let us modify this do to do a certificate pinning for us so in order to work with that one what we'll do is we'll go to over here and uh, let us change the base url so and the certificate depends on the set um, let us close this one so the base url that we need over here so this is the one because the certificate belongs to this particular url so i need to get that url and i need to update the the base url from here and let's add the uh, https https connection over here so let's say this is our the base url and let me update it for rest of our environment so let's open up all of our device uh, or the env file and let us update it on all of our environment over here so we have a qa and finally we will have a uat so now we have a different uh, we have a url and the certificate so once we have update this what we need to is we need to generate our the environment file so we need to generate this environment file so for that what we need is we again need to have this just copy it and just paste it over here now this one should be the one that we got it from here so i'll just get the certificate 
and uh, paste it over here and then i'll just make sure that you obfuscate this one because this is a sensitive information we want to do a obfuscate for that particular field and this one we'll just call it as a certificate and this will be of the certificate over here and what we'll do is we'll just copy the same thing and we will paste it for the rest of our uh, flavor over here or the environment that we have okay so let us arrange it properly and uh, once we have this what we need to do is we need to run our build runner so let us go and run the build runner so fvm flutter pub run build runner and the build dash dash delete conflicting outputs so once we hit that it will go and generate the uh, the env the dot env dot g dot dot file for us and once we have that what we'll do is we'll go to our the env reader and we will read that particular configuration so just copy this and from here uh, we need to read that file so that will be of the certificate and the uh, certificate here uh, certificate and this will be of the certificate so this is the string but what we need uh, later will be of uh, the uh, list of the uh, int right we will require a list int over here because uh, later when we actually do the certificate pinning and the uh, do we will require the different format over there and i guess it's not the list in it should be i guess a uh, unit at list uh unit at list so just make sure you get a unit, uh, unit at list from here and the type is the get the certi if i see it get the certificate uh why get the c or t r f i c get certificate okay and uh, this is a string over here and what we need to do is we need to change the return type from here so what we'll do is we'll just say a uh, base uh, 64 and we will decode it so let's decode uh encode decode it okay so here we'll pass in that string and it will decode it and return as the actual file for us and i'll do the same thing for here the base 64 decode and just decode that one and over here too and that should be all of it i guess we have one more and i guess that should be the last one so now here we are depending on our flavor we are returning a different certificate for the dev uh, qa uat and the production and the return type will be of the unit at list so i guess i have some error so let me remove this and that should be fine so once we have that let's go back to the uh, network service and in the network service what we'll do is over here in the do let's go down over here and i'll just say underscore the do dot i have a http uh, adapter client adapter as the um default client uh, default client adapter right so once i have that so i guess i need a bracket so i'll just open and close it over here and then i need a dot on http on http client uh, create so what we need to do is over here we will let's have this client it over here so once we have this client okay i'll just open another one too and uh, then here we will close it and once we have this client what we'll do is inside this what we'll try to do is we'll try to verify that one so i'll just say final let's say uh, context which is of equals to the all uh, right security uh, security context where is that security context i have what i need and you can also say this one as the type pitch of the security context once we have this uh, security context what i can client i have a client a dot and i can that certificate callback which is of equals to i will just say the 
X509 uh, uh, X509 certificate and uh, then you'll just call it as a, a cert host okay I should be that should be fine and here we will return the false over here and that should be fine and uh, let me I guess I need to import it it's giving me some error so where did did I forgot to close it anywhere I guess I made some mistake over here oh, okay so it should not be here so I'll just remove this one and just I can remove it from here too and this one is a x509 certificate and this is a host this is a string and this is an input so I can just pass the type if you get confused what is it so this will be type of the string and, and then this will be type of the int so once we have that what we'll do is we'll do go and say context uh, dot and uh, set the trusted certificate so trusted certificate bytes so we need uh, that particular bytes over here and uh, we'll just say return from here what we want to return is the http client right so http client and then it has a context and we we'll pass in the context so once we have this let me arrange it properly we need to have this right so this is coming from our here the not the base url the certificate so do we have yeah we have the environment reader already over here and uh, what i can do is i can just go and say it as a final and i'll just say cert byte which is of equals to the uh, env reader that we have en env reader dot i'll just get the certificate and that's it so we have already set up it over here this way we get the uh, certificate byte or which returns as the unit at least and when we set the set uh, set trusted certificate bytes it requires the list at int over here listing so uh, this way we are checking that whether we are trying to set our the security context over here which is uh, with the certificate pin with us and when we are making a connection it will verify that certificate for us so once we set up this code what we need to do is we need to check whether this uh, this configuration is working for us if if we try to connect to the um, that particular base domain then we should get the response back if, if you connect to the that domain and it doesn't uh, if the certificate doesn't match then it should return us the error so for that what we'll do is let's go to the um, let's go to our what we have over here let me open up whether we have anything to test currently we don't have anything so let's go to the main widget over here and uh, i guess we only have this uh, home page so let's try to do it over here and let's create a, a do client over here let's say a do and just say i need a do over here and uh, in the init state so let's say i have in its state and here let us try to okay, this is another good way of doing okay so i'm just trying to show you how whether the, the configuration that we just did is working or not so we get binding over here we get binding that the instance that add the on the post frame callback so let us initialize over here so uh this stateful widget i'll convert to this you know, as consumer stateful uh, widget from here and this will be of our base consumer state and once we have that what we'll do is i will have access to the ref from the river port ref dot read and i'll read the uh, network service provider from here and uh, this will return us the uh, do right so what i can say is underscore do that i have will be of equals to this one so uh, we have this and it should be of our lit 
and then we have that one once we have the du what we'll do is uh, let us try to get some value from the api so let's say avoid and uh, get some data something uh, you just name it and uh, what we'll do is we'll try to connect to the api server uh, here what we'll do is uh, underscore do dot and i'll just use a get from here and put in the path so let's put in the path from here let me copy the path i have one path from here just copy this and let me put it over here and uh, let me go and final and rsp and response which is equal to this and uh, then once i have the response i can just uh, log.info and let's log the response over here so we are not going to do it anything that we are just kind of going to test this one so what i will do is uh, once our do is ready so i'll try to go and get that information from here and uh, that should be fine so it, it returns us the future so i have to make it as a uh, asynchronous and i need to make use as a await over here and let us try to run and test this one and uh, look like we have some error over here let me try to remove this one okay that should be fine and there is some more error where is the error so i need to find that particular error i guess somewhere here okay so this should be of a consumer state okay so that should be fine and let us try to run our application i'll be running on the uh, debug version so we can see the console log and we got some error it says that the we need to increase our uh, sdk version so let's go to the android configuration over here and uh, let us try to fix that one on the app and on the build at gradle so what we have is we need to fix the build version right so where is that build version okay flutter build version so currently we don't have set up anything so let's try to set it directly from here we let's say about 25 minimum and, and then the compile version uh, where is that compile version should be somewhere here right compile version right uh, flavor here the compile version uh, for the compile version let us keep it as a uh, 33 and also over here the target uh, flutter version let's set it as a 33 manually over here but later we will set how we to get it from the local properties over here so currently we haven't set up that one so uh, let's try to just test it with directly configuration from here and let us try to run it one more time just run in the dev version and now you can see that once the application is running you can or you are able to connect to that particular server so you can see we are get we are connect, sending a request to the server and there we don't have any error so it's returning all of our response and also we are printing out over here we can see the info then all of the information are printing out so which means that the certificate that we have pinned over here it matches with the uh, with the url or the server or the domain name that we have set it over here which we are trying to get some information from the api so which means that our configuration is working fine and the next thing that we might need is we just need to fix this particular issue over here so hard coding over here uh, is not a good way so we can also get it from the information from our local properties so uh, let's try to fix this and let's try to set all of this information from our local properties and let's open this local.d properties file and let us copy this one over here and we'll need for three over here one is to, for the uh, min sdk uh, is the minimum is uh, dk version right and then let's set the minimum sdk version to the 25 and there we will say the the rg 
HTTTR target SDK version, right? So we have a target SDK version. Uh, let's set it to 33. And then we will have one more compiled compile SDK uh, version. So we require three. So let's set it to the 33 over here. And for that, let's go back once we have set up over here. Let's go on to the top over here. And here we are reading, reading it from here, version code. So we will do the same thing. So just copy this one and just paste it over here. We will require for D3, right? So another one and here. So here version name is will be our uh, minimum SDK version. So once we have that minimum SDK version, another one we need a target SDK version. And then, then we will need another one is the compile SDK version. So just paste it. So here we'll just rename that one too. And the compile SDK version, we will need a version of 33. And this one is a target SDK version. And that if it is null, then we'll just set the target to the 33 as well. And we have a minimum SDK version. So just paste it over here and this one will return the minimum to the 25 so that should be fine and uh, we will need to go to the down somewhere here not in the flavor and we need it over here so compile SDK version is this uh, particular compile SDK version so just copy this and paste it over here and I'll just say to integer and uh, then we have another one let's go down uh, which is of a uh, minimum SDK version so just copy the this one minimum SDK version and this requires also into the int so I'll just convert it to integer and uh, then now I will need another one which is of a compiled right so not the compile I guess is that the compile okay so compile is over here it should be of a target SDK version. Just copy this and, and then here, where is the target is here? Target SDK version to the integer. Okay, so I guess that should be defined and I'll just close this one because we have changed some uh, native code and we need to rerun our application and let us see if we get any error. So as soon as we run, we found some errors. So let's go and see what is the error that we are getting. So let us take a look over here what error it is getting. So uh, what I will do is I guess something is not correct. So let me try to rename this one to Flutter and uh, minimum SDK version. So let us try to rename this one. Maybe it's because of the same as the um, the gradle file right so it may be getting confused over here let's try to use a flutter target uh, sdk version just rename it and uh, here we will just say that's a failure to the flutter compile sdk version just change this one check off your flutter just copy and paste it over here and here and then we'll try to replace it here flutter compiled sdk version and then we have a target just copy this and replace it over here and then we have the flutter minimum sdk version so that should go over here and let us try to run more one more time and let's see if we are getting any error over here okay the build is successful and now we are able to run our application and that's it so i hope you enjoyed this lecture and learn something new from here and um, we'll meet up in the next lecture till then have a great day